Joshua chapter 2. And Joshua, the son of Nun, that's his father, not a group of women in a religion, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly. Now notice he only sends two men to spy, not twelve. He's learned his lesson. And these two men are probably be faithful men that are known of Joshua. And they went and came into our harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, you've got two military men, and when they are set off, the first place is recorded they go into a harlot's house. That's just one of the practice of military men. It's life. But we see Rahab. And let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Matthew 1, verse 5. Matthew 1, 5. I thought I said there's Rahab here somewhere. I got the wrong one. Okay. Well, let's go to Hebrews 11, 31. Little error there. Bible's correct. Man is not. Hebrews 11, verse 31. The great faith chapter. 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she received the spies with peace. So, she had faith. Now, let's look at verse 29 of Hebrews 11. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying, to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. From the time that Israel crossed the Red Sea onto Jericho, which we haven't read yet, we're coming to in chapter 2, there is no one recorded to have faith in the wilderness journey. Look at that. You come from the Red Sea, and the next time you see faith, you see it in Joshua, and the next time you see faith after Joshua, you see it in Rahab. Rahab, when she tied that thread on her window, she knew that she would be saved by the children of Israel and by God. So before we even break forth in the chapter 2, she's got faith. And then James chapter 2, 25. James 2, 25. The Bible says, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot. <laughs> Look how the Bible puts it. Rahab the harlot. That's what she was. Justified by works. When she had received the messengers. Oh, spies are messengers. And has sent them out another way. Messenger. They're going in. They're finding out what's going on. They're coming back to Joshua. And we learn by James, she hides them, chapter 2, but she sends them out in another direction, away from the men of Jericho, so they don't get caught. So we learn much of Joshua, chapter 2. Well, Rahab, she had faith. I got another one here. Let me check this one first, real quick. Make sure it's correct. So, these men come into the city, there's two of them, and by chance there were two proper spies that came back with a good report, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua is not going to send a mass of men. 
And they come into the harlot's house. And they lodge there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel. So here's a report. Israel's coming to land. Trouble. Warning. We got to do something. They are afraid, and we'll see what, what Rahab says in a moment. They are afraid of the children of Israel. Children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho, Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to, th come to thee, which are entered into thy house. Someone's told. Because that's exactly what those men did. For they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took two men and hid them. And said thus, There came men unto me, true, but I wist not whence they were, untrue. Now Rahab is going to tell a big fat fib. And she's saved by her lie. And it is a lie. And we'll see another story later on, Lord willing, when we get to the Bible, that there'll be other people of Israel, of David's men, that are hid inside of a well. Well, I don't know where they are. A lie. And the only thing you can do that you don't see no rebuke is that men are liars. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. But you've got Jewish men. And upon Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the twelve tribes, I will bless them that bless you. She's taking care of the Jews. She's not turning them over, so she's going to get a blessing. You say, well, what about the lie? We've got another story, Exodus chapter 1. And this can be a true or a lie. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 18, the king says, Listen, I order you I order you two women. I told you to kill those male babies. You done you haven't done it. Verse 19. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the women, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. Okay, that's true. For they are lively and are delivered heir, that's before the midwives come in unto them. So the baby's already there before we show up. Now that could be a lie. That may not be a lie. Therefore God does well with the midwives, and the people multiply and wax very great, and it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And there's one thing that comes down if you're going to protect those Jews. God's going to bless you. And there's a time coming up that Jesus out of his own mouth at the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus comes, he separates the, the sheep from the goats. And he will say unto the sheep, you took care of my people. You fed them. You visited them in prison. They were ill and you, you sought their, their health. You, you visited them. You, you took care of them. Enter into the millennium. Enter into the rest. And they don't even have an idea what they did. And Rahab is being blessed by helping blessing the Jews. The midwives were blessed and God helped them because they helped the Jews. And I'm telling you, if you were to find a Jew who's definitely out of the way, forsaken, need of help, I'd help them. You got to be... <laughs> Very careful today because there's a lot of swindlers out there. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, Therefore came men unto me, but I wist not whence they are or were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. That's a lie. Whither the men went, I know not. That's a lie. Pursue after them quickly. Yeah, that's a lie. For ye shall overtake them. That's a lie. She's protecting them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house. 
Now, this is where we're going to start getting weird. She's on the roof. Later on, we're going to read that she's on the wall. And hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So they're hiding behind plants. On her roof or in her roof however it was and the men pursued after them the way to the Jordan unto the fords and as soon as they were pursued after them were going out they shut the gate so they're going out they shut the gate we got trouble you guys go find them and the two spies are inside the city and before they were laid down she came up unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men i know that the lord has given you the land look at that this is a gentile woman and that your terror is falling upon us that's why the king wanted them and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you now that you guys are over there on the other side of Jordan and you're coming over, we're scared to death. And now here you are in our city. Here you are in my house. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. Well, look at that. News got around just as much as news gets around today. We have heard through the post. We have heard through the caravans. We have through, heard through the Ishmaelites. We have heard through the nomads. It is news, even though there's no television. It is news, even though there's no radio. We have heard breaking news. The Israelites have crossed the Red Sea, and you won't believe what God did for them to cross it. When you came out of Egypt, so they knew about Egypt, they knew about the Red Sea, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, there's that guy again, that guy shows up so many times, whom ye utter, utterly destroyed, there's the news going out. Those things made the news in B.C. 1451 thereabouts. Give or take a few years or not. The people knew what was going on around them. Here's this people, Israel. Now they're on the other side of the Jordan. And as soon as we have heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, don't you think God's going to do something with that young lady? He's protecting the Jew. She is blessing a Jew. And she believes that God, amongst small G-O-D-S, that big G-O-D, he is to God. The news that what God has done for Israel has come to this woman. And she's going to get right. And she made it in Hebrews chapter 11. Saul is not in Hebrews 11. But this harlot is. Let's look at Exodus 15, 15. Exodus 15, 15. Yeah, that's another bad one. What well, is some bad purposes? Okay, Exodus 15, 15, the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling shall take hold upon him. Okay, all the inhabitants of Cana shall melt away. At what? At the, at the coming. Here comes that Israel. Balak. Here comes Israel. I've got to get Balaam. I've got to curse these people. These people are coming. Here they come. I am scared to death of them, and I'm scared to death of their God. You realize what their God does? You hear about that Red Sea, that entire body of sea, and they're not amazed because it's not the Sea of Reeds, it's the Red Sea. Have you ever seen on the map the Red Sea? That God opened that whole thing up, not the Sea of Reeds. That wouldn't make them 
And by the way, they went by the way of the sea, the sea of reeds. How on earth did they get over on the other side of the Jordan and give the land to Gad and uh, uh, Reuben and half tribe Manasseh, and then come back over? That don't make sense. So when you mess with the Bible, you you don't make no sense. The Red Sea, it's a big body of water. I don't know if they have a map in the in the uh, Jordan. I mean, in the Jericho schoolrooms, oh, this is the Red Sea. But here's a God, big G O D, and he's separating. And here's his people. They're in my roof right now. I am talking to two of them. Now watch what she does. Now here's the faith. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, Jehovah. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah. That is a harlot in the city of Jericho, or on the city. I mean, where her position of her house is, she's in Jericho. Just don't just know she's on the inside or the outside. But here is a heathen woman, and she's acknowledging big G-O-D and Jehovah. And these men have been hiding all day or night. They have not had a Bible study and taught her about God yet. And she's talking to them. They're, they're in the roof. They're maybe scared. They don't know what's going on. And she says, your God is a wonderful God. You're Jehovah God. I'm relying on him. That's remarkable. Since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. I want something to say you're going to help me. And that token will be that red thread, the scarlet thread. So what's a token? It's something that you leave behind. You know, one of the things we got today is you, you can buy for you and your sweetheart this necklace. And it's a broken heart that it will only match between you and your, and your sweetheart. And you can take that together and, and put it together and it makes one. We're together. A wedding ring is a token. My wedding ring says I'm married to Tracy, and her wedding ring says she's married to me. That's a token to anybody in the world. Say, hey, I'm married. See that? I'm happily married. That's a token. And you know what men do? Some men do. They take off that token, they put it in their pocket, and they go out trying to find lust. I want to have many women. Here in this harlot's house, I don't know how many there, but how many men have gone in there and taken away their token of marriage to be with these women? And she's looking for a token say, I want to have proof. I want to have something. I want to have acknowledgement of your God. Not the spies, your God. And that ye will give, wait a minute, that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters. Keep going. And all that they have. And deliver our lives from death. We don't want to die. We want to live. Now let's go to Acts 10.24. Hopefully this one will be right. I'm not doing too well today. Acts 10.24. And when these men come back, as Jericho, and when they get to Jericho, Joshua is going to send these men. And we see this in Acts 10.24. The angel appears at Cornelius and says, go get Peter. Peter's on his way. Verse 24, and, and tomorrow, after they enter Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them. And he had called together his kinmen and near friends. So when Peter enters his house, here's all these people. And Cornelius said, hey, I got a Bible preacher coming. We're not going to church to hear from him. You come to my house, we'll sit in my house, and you wait for Peter to come. When Peter walks in that room, there's his family, and there's his friends. There's maybe servants. This important man's coming. And what this woman's going to do, relying upon this token, relying upon the trust of these people of God, hey, if you say you're going to come and save me, I'm going to gather everybody I can into my room, into my house, and we're going to rely on God to protect us all. So not only Rahab was saved, but her family. 
And the men, and this is faith. This is that that faith. This is the works. And the men answered her, "Our life, what we what we're living right now, for your. If he uttered not this, our business. So we'll make this agreement with you, but if you turn us in, we're going to make this whole thing void." And it shall be when the Lord Jehovah, matched with what she said, Jehovah, has given us the land. Now look, now look at their faith. God's going to give it to us. In the mouth of a harlot, this is ours. And they can rightfully say, this is our land. This is not your land. From the Jordan to the Mediterranean, <laughs> this is our land. <laughs> Look at the faith they got. The Lord hath given us. Past tense. They believe in the Lord. They've got faith. Faith. The land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a by a cord, a, a rope kind of thing. That's the first time cord shows up in your Bible. And it's not a rope. It says a cord. There's a reason why it don't say rope. Cord. So every time you say, honey, you ain't got any cords? <laughs> Think about those spies. Through the window. That's kind of interesting because Jesus says, I'm the door, and she lets him out the window. For her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. That's kind of weird. The walls of Jericho had houses and apartments in it. And if you were to Google Jericho and archaeology, they will show you many pictures. What they believe, but there's a possibility. They can actually show you Rahab's house. All the walls are flattened, but there's one section that is still there. Now, time and weather and, and elements have made it not so much today but when they come in and that wall is taken down that one section right here where she lives is still standing there is no shadow of doubt there is no question where Rahab and her family is because all the other walls are all just flattened down I advise you to take a look at that and I'm gonna the picture I have for today's title is that section of wall that's still there amazing Archaeology says the Bible's true, and the Bible says I am true. The walls of this city, give a shout, and the walls fall down. How strong are their walls? There are not apartments, there are houses in that wall. In her house, I don't know if she was on the top floor or whatever, her house has a roof big enough to keep stalks of flax that's an awful big house that's an awful big wall that god said all right no bazookas no cannonballs no dynamite just give a shout and they all fall flat except this one section of the wall that's a miracle that is some token isn't it can you imagine them sitting in that house just for a moment? The Bible says that Rahab had faith. There they are. They're coming. We hear them. We hear them marching. We hear them shouting. And you can feel the walls just rumbling and crumbling down. They're probably going, oh, my, oh man, we're in trouble. We're dead. And then just, uh, this settles and eases. And it's like, what's going on? And they look out there. I don't know if they look out their windows. Wow, the walls are going but ours. And here comes those two spies rescuing us. I don't know. I guarantee that wall made some kind of motion, kind of noise, kind of rumbling. But these walls, as much as house people in them, apartments in houses, I guarantee it made a sound. It made a rumble when it came down. Flat, the Bible says. And look up the archaeology pictures of Jericho's walls. Through the window for her house was upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. Now it's a city. And yet there's a wall that divides the town from the city of Jericho. 
Now I can't, like I said, you go read the archaeology, it's a great thing. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Now James said that she sent them another way. So I'm, what I'm going to say, we're not giving direction, but I'm going to give for a for illustration direct let's say that the men of Jericho the soldiers that went looking for them let's say they went west she's gonna send them east if they went north she's gonna send them south they went that way she said according to James she sends them the other way Lisa pursuers meet thee and hide yourselves there three days now mark that three days in your Bible that three days is, is just remarkable from Genesis to Revelation, three days. Until the pursuers be returned. That's her own countrymen. That's her own Jerichoites, whatever they call themselves. When my soldiers come back into town, then go back to your soldiers. And afterwards, may you go your way. Now, why not? They say, okay, let's go Rahab right now. That king is hot on her trail. And that king goes knocking on her door and she's gone. He goes knocking on her door. Yeah, what do you guys want? Oh, I just wanted to see if you were what was on. You got those men in here? Don't you know there's men in here? Get out of here. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thy oath, her oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, here it again. We're going to come into the land. Thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread. Red thread. The blood they put over the doors was red. In thy window, which thou didst let us down by. See this window you're letting us down? You put this right here. Here's this red thread. You tie it on that window. So we know where... Now... This wall in this house has got to be miraculous because they're looking at the wall and saying, hey, we got to know where you are because here's the red thread. There must be other windows. There must be other houses and apartments on this wall. I want to look at another thing over here. Like I said, I've been too well in verses. And we go to Acts 9.25. Acts chapter 9, verse 25, Paul, and we'll start at verse 20, Acts 9, 20, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on the name in Jerusalem? I mean, he's killing Christians. And came hither for that intent. And he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. Listen, he came here to, to capture Christians and to bound them. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proven that this is the very Christ. And after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their lying awake was made known of Saul. And they watched the gate day and night to kill him. That's what's going on right now. They're watching for the two spies. And the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Here comes Paul. He's, he's going over the wall in a basket. Makes you wonder how many times Paul relate to this story of the spies coming over the wall. And the man said unto her, We will be blameless of this oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, and thy brethren. <laughs> we'll, just call, we'll just say brethren, not sisters, brothers, blah, 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 blah. And all thy father's household home unto thee. It's her home. It's big enough to put her whole family in. And it shall be that whosoever shall go... Now, this, this is an oath that's really trusting in God. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street 
Now, I don't know if she had direct access to the street. His blood shall be upon his head. And we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in thy house, his blood shall be on our head, and any hand be upon it. Now, what's going on here? When we come and attack this city, let's, let's say her father. Let's say her father goes out and goes down to the convenience store. All right, if he dies, he's in the street. Hey, he should have been in your house. Now, if your father's sitting in your rocking chair, and if he dies when we come, and he's in your house, it's our fault. That is faith in God. Do you know what that also is a type of for this Gentile? It's a type of Passover. It's not the blood. It's when I see that scarlet thread, anybody in your house is protected. This is a remarkable case as, as a Christian. We are bound by the scarlet of Jesus Christ, his blood. So what's the Bible say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in thy house, and thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall be in thy house, his blood shall be upon our head, if any hand be upon him. So this is an extreme care of duty. Cause number one. Anybody leaves your house, we're not responsible. Anybody in your house, we're responsible. Cause number three, and if thou other this our business, then we will be quit of the time of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. If you tell anybody about us, then this oath is done. Your neck is in the ringer. And she said, according to the words, so be it. That means amen. So be it. That means amen. Amen means so be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Instantly. They take off running off to the mountains right? and she ties it on there. And this speaks of, of a color of safety through sacrifice. It pictures Jesus Christ. We are safe in Jesus. And they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days. They listened to her. Until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the army goes back into Jericho. They shut the gate. So the two men returned and descended from the mountains. And passed over and came unto Joshua the son of Nun. And told him all things that befell. Tells him exactly what's happened. Tells him probably what the city looks like. What's going on? And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered it into our hands. Look at the faith. All the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. And there's a woman in there and told the whole story. Remarkable. We're supposed to do what Christ has told us to do. Even in the Old Testament, you find people testifying of what God Jehovah has done. 